This may look like a big old brick full of comic books, but it is not. So if you're one of the many people who subscribed to me at first because I was doing a lot of comic book stuff, don't click off this video. Stick around. I'm just going to talk about movies. This is a set of Blu-rays that I bought from HamiltonBook.com, which is a very interesting site that I discovered recently from somebody else's YouTube video. And they have a lot of very competitively priced Blu-rays and $4 flat shipping. So no matter what you buy, you're paying $4 for shipping. So I thought that was pretty darn cool. So I decided to give them a shot and place an order. I like this big cardboard coffin they shipped everything in. And <clears throat> pardon me. On the last DVD haul that I did, last Blu-ray haul, I thought that video wasn't that great because I didn't talk about the films enough, but there's a reason for that. And that is when, you bl when I blind buy something, I want to go into the movie blind. And on top of that, those indicator Blu-rays I was showing, they typically don't have a film synopsis on the back of the case because... Here I have the I actually just watched I watched this, The Damned. And there's no um you'll see there's no film synopsis. Maybe because the <laughs> incredible amount of special features that they have take up the whole back of the case. So that also makes it challenging to say, here's this movie, here's what it's about. I watched I literally watched somebody else do an indicator haul. And he had obviously done his homework because he was talking about the films. And his video was a, a room. It was a opportunity to improve on mine after I saw his. However, like I said, I like to go into a movie completely blind if I trust the publisher, the studio, the director, actors who are in it. I like to do that, and I would I get paid off generously that way by watching movies like this which starts out as one thing and becomes something completely different. And it's a pleasant surprise when a movie just takes a complete left turn and you're like, holy smokes, what am I watching? So it's a little bit of a conflict. Now, these Blu-rays that I have here are not indicator, so we don't have that problem. And also, I did look up some of the ones that I knew very little about. So I'll try to elaborate a little bit more on the movies themselves. I got eight Blu-rays here. It cost me a little bit over 50 bucks. It was a great deal. A lot of stuff on sale. And like I said, $4 flat fee shipping. HamiltonBook.com. This is not a sponsored thing. I just like to waste my money. First, we got Cat's Eye. This is a horror anthology that... I am relatively certain I have seen before, although I can't remember if I've seen it or have watched just a million different YouTube videos on it and never actually seen the movie. Now this one I kind of regret a little bit because I just kind of got it because it was in the spooky season kind of mood. And then I realized this, this baby is on Amazon Prime. Now I'm a big proponent of physical media, but that doesn't mean that I don't stream and watch a bunch of stuff online or on streaming so uh, i'm not sure if i actually needed this one but i think it was like three or four dollars and and i just caught this special feature length commentary by director lewis teague so that's your only that and a trailer are the only features but that's good enough for me i love my commentaries next i got this scream queen double feature with the fog and the howling these are two pretty well-known movies, so I'm not, I, I'm not sure that I need to go into a uh, synopsis here. But this is a Scream Factory release. Two movies on one thing. I thought that was a good deal. This is kind of an interesting one. Mr. Topaz. I have seen and I really like the 1933 version of Topaz. It's called Topaz. It has John Barrymore and Myrna Loy. Now, I can tell you what this movie is about because I saw a previous version of it. It's this like genius level school teacher who gets fired from his job because he won't pass one of his failing students. The student happens to be 
the family member of someone high up in the school. So the Topaz actually loses his job because of that. Uh, and he formulates this drink, like he formulates a soda. Or I can't remember if he gets hired by the soda company that, to formulate a soda. But basically, they sell the soda as his formula, but they're really just using cheaper ingredients and making the soda crappy. Um, and it's how he deals with that corruption. And this is with Peter Sellers, so... I don't know. This didn't get a ton of... It doesn't have a super high rating on IMDb or Letterboxd, but I thought, since I like the original... I, I, don't, I keep calling it the original. I'm not sure, because there's... In the 20s and 30s, there were so many movies that got redone many times. I don't know if it's the original version, but the 1933 version I liked a lot. Let's take out something completely different. <laughs> Spring Breakers. <laughs> Now, this movie is so not in my wheelhouse because it is raunchy, debaucherous, has tons of nudity in it, just stuff that I don't care for. Uh, but, but, for some reason, I love this movie. I'm not even that big of a Harmony Corinne fan. If you know who that is, maybe you've heard of the movie Kids. He wrote that movie and also Gummo. Uh, what's the other ones I've seen? I think that's all I've seen because why would I want to sit through this guy's movies? But <laughs> I, saw, I saw this one uh, streaming and I loved it so much. So when I saw this was available, I grabbed it. There's no commentary, unfortunately. I would, oh, wait, there is an audio commentary. It doesn't say who's on it, though. <clears throat> that's interesting. But it's basically about these... These four girls go on spring break. They fund their spring break by holding up a diner. And then they go on spring break and they get caught up in the world of James Franco's character, who is just this ridiculous, like, wannabe rapper gangster dude. And it's it's so balanced between the most kitschy, like, gauche thing you ever saw and, like, this, like... Shakespearean <laughs> like high art drama. I don't know. I just love it. Not even as so bad as good. I think it's good. Next we got Dr. Blood's Coffin. We dare you to look into Dr. Blood's Coffin. I'm going to read the back of this one because I didn't even look this one up. After being dismissed from medical school because of his devious experiments, Dr. Peter Blood returns home to join his father's practice. He still believes he can create the perfect human, so he continues his experiments in an abandoned mine where he attempts to revive a rotting corpse. That's good enough. I'll stop right there. This looks cool. Again, another Scream Factory release. Don't know too much about it beyond what I just read you, and I and there are no special features on here that I can tell. But, again, Halloween season, spooky movies. My wife and I are watching. I watch movies every day, but my wife and I are watching them on the weekend. And going for Halloween-ish or horror-ish type movies, so long as they're not super gory and torture-y. Here we got an Arrow video release. Dario Argento's The Cat of Nine Tales. I read up a, a little bit about this one. There's... These two guys who live together, I think, oh my god, I don't, blind puzzle maker Franco Arno, who overheard an attempt to blackmail one of the Institute's, I, I jumped into the middle of it. So this blind guy basically gets roped into a conspiracy, and it sounds interesting, and I have often seen this pretty cheap i'm not sure what the deal is like usually arrow they have a lot of sales on their own website and their movies go pretty low sometimes and this is usually one of them but i didn't have it i don't have a ton of arrow in my collection they don't have they don't have all that many titles that appeal to me to be quite honest nothing against them i think their releases are great uh i just like their japanese stuff that's mostly what I have. Uh, next, we got Hoodlum Empire. World War II veteran and 
ex-gangster Joe Gray, no relation, is subpoenaed to testify against his uncle and current mob boss, Nick Mancani. Nick must restrain Charlie Pignati, P Pignat <laughs> Pignatali, his violent second-in-command, from killing Joe before his court appearance. Looks good. Directed by Joseph Kane. And last, I got this. This is an Olive Films release. I only have two others. I have... Lulu Bell, which was a pretty good movie, and then SOS Tidal Wave or Tidal Wave SOS. I can't, I think it's called SOS Tidal Wave. And despite the title of that one, it's like a political drama. It was pretty good. This one, The Brain, is a heist movie where these guys try to rip off like a government shipment or something like a NATO, NATO funds. Secret NATO funds going from Paris to Brussels. And apparently, this is one of the first times that a, a good print of this movie has been available to English-speaking people. So, it looked interesting. It was The price was right. And I like Olive's releases, even though I don't have too many of them. They have a very interesting case all the olive cases have like squared off edges it's very interesting oh and i just realized this hoodlum empire is an olive as well but if you look it's not going to show up on camera but the the olive cases are squared off where this screen factory for example is rounded on the top i don't know maybe it's possible to see it i'm not sure but it's interesting it gives them just a little subtle piece of extra flair when it's sitting on your shelf. Anyway, that's more movies for you. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me and I'll see you on the next video.